Well, we're going to have a little bit different thing going on this month with what I read in the month of June. I'm actually filming this at the end of May and the reason for that is I have a subscriber that has a YouTube channel and we've been chatting back and forth and she has no idea that I'm doing this. Um, but Chantal over at An Intentional Life does these um, like TBRs based on these random cards and what we're going to do is my daughter and I were reading or watching uh, her video and we're like oh this would be fun to kind of do it so we're actually going to participate using the prompts that she did and I'm going to be telling you what we read at the end of the month so there is no rhyme or reason to what I read which will be interesting so I'm going to leave this video linked down below so you can go watch it we're going to have my daughter join in this is my TBR cart behind me but the first book but we're going to watch and see what her first prompt is and then go and choose a book based on this prompt. Where I will be picking my TBR off of my TBR cart. Okay, let's go with this one. Oh, <laughs> random number. Okay, so what I did last time. Random number, which you chose. We're going to do it a little bit differently than what she did. She based it off of like how many shelves are here, so your front and your back. And then the random number told her which shelf, and then then she counted how many books were there, and then chose um, the number based on that. Honestly, I'm just going to start from left to right. We had a random number chosen, which was six, and so Emma went and grabbed the sixth book off of the shelf, which was... I've read this one so many times. It's going to be my second time reading it this year. Well, then you'll figure out if you like it or not. And then for me, number six, one, two, three, four, five, six. I was like, oh no, not that one, not that one. Okay. Wolf Hollow. So I actually also get a children's book. So, all right, let's see what our next one's gonna be. Uh, this one is most recent. Oh. Okay, what's what? the most recent one? Most recent. Oh, most so it's recent. Most recent purchase. Okay. Yours is. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. So we're back. Um, ironically, the kids don't think that making a YouTube video about books is as important as dinner. I don't know why they would think that. So we had to stop and do dinner. And now we've got a laundry going around in the background. So the sound on this is going to be fun. But anyway, we were at... <laughs> Very cool. We were at choosing the latest book that we purchased. And I actually had to look this up on my phone because I didn't remember what it was. Because we've had some like homeschool purchases lately. But the one that I had recently purchased was the Ministry of Ordinary Places. So uh, that's my latest purchase. Not including the books that haven't been that haven't arrived yet. So anyway. Um, Alright, let's see what our next one is. And we're doing this together because actually last year or a year before I think it was actually a year before we did a another book review type thing where uh, we both read something to do with the Pinkerton detective series and I'll leave that link down below for you she looks bored out of her mind doesn't she so I'll leave um, when we did that video link down below because that was fun okay our next book is Non-fiction. Non Non-fiction non -fiction is what? Not fake. So it's true. True. That's gonna be tough. So go find something that's good. <laughs> um, um, I'm gonna choose a, a fun one because I actually wanted to do this book. So I'm gonna do this one. <laughs> oh my That'll be fun to do a review for later. Because I have it up here that I wanted to do. <laughs> okay, and then mine. Brownie was... points were embarrassing. And you're going to finish that one. Yeah. Well, because I've already started it, but. Is it almost done? No. Not at all. We probably won't see each other for the next month. <laughs> Alright, let's see what the next book is. So, 
That's my nonfiction. One more here. Creepy. Creepy. Well, I don't have many of those. <laughs> well, Harry Potter. Harry Potter would be creepy. No. Creepy. Oh, I don't know if I have anything creepy on here. I don't really go for creepy. I do have, she, she has a one coming up later on Agatha Christie. I'm gonna do this one. This is The Outsiders, and if I remember, it's about gangs and things like that. This is highly recommended. So I'm gonna choose this one for creepy. No, I'll do. I've got I've got an interesting stack. Okay, let's see what else we have. Um, challenge in here. So that means I have one more book, and this is the book that Holly picked for me. So okay. Mommy. So her daughter picks a book out for her. Very nice, Charlie. Her daughter picks out a book for her, so you get to pick one out for me, and I get to pick one out for you. Oh my gosh. Okay. Ugh. Okay. You can go into I'm going to go look and then she can choose. <clears throat> oh my. Okay, we each have our book for each other. I chose something skinny because I knew she had a big stack here. One, two, three. <laughs> now you have two Shannon Martins, apparently. I didn't even know that. I did not recognize that I had two by the same author. Did not know that. Okay, so she chose Falling Free. I purchased this one at Ollie's because I love the back of it. Um, Shannon Martin had the perfect life. A cute farmhouse on a six rambling acres, a loving husband, three adorable kids, money, friends, and a close-knit church. A safe and happy existence. But when the bottom dropped out through a series of shocking changes and ordinary inconveniences, the Martins followed God's call to something radically different. A small house on the other side of the urban tracks, a shoestring income, a, chal a challenged public school, and the harshness of country jail where her husband is now a chaplain. I thought this would be um, really good and how ironic that I'm going to be doing it along with another one of her books that I didn't make the connection that... It was the same author. And then you have Listening for Lions by one of my favorite authors. Gloria Wellen does an amazing job writing books um, with a, a broad point of view. So Homeless Bird is one of my favorites. Choo Choo's House is one of my favorites. Listening for Lions is about this missionary daughter who loses her parents and she's in Africa. And she goes back home, and now it's just like this completely different atmosphere and environment than what she's used to. So that's what I chose for you, mainly because it was skinny and thin. But I also want to introduce Gloria Wellen to you, because she's awesome. I have a lot of her books. You have a lot of her books. I have a lot of her books that you have put on your shelf. Well, a lot of her books on my shelf. So, uh, we will save this footage and then at the end of June, we will wrap up our thoughts on this. This may have to be a two-part video. Yeah, we can do that. Because we both talk and it could take forever. Like, forever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, stay tuned till, till the end of the month and see what we think of these books. Ah, well, like the opening of this video showed, we had uh, some reviews to do here. So, actually what happened was my daughter ended up just needing a little bit easier read than what we had done. So, actually in the next clip, we have different books that we're discussing. And part of it was, she just forgot which ones that she had chosen. We rearranged the room and things happened. So, we're going to just talk about a couple of the books that she did read. And I hope you enjoy that little footage. Again, we were just trying to do this together, so it was meant to be a fun experience. Um, so the, the books that you had this month was Harry Potter. Changelings. Changeling. The Story of My Life. Uh, Helen Keller. Um, Listening for Lions. And I think that was it. Okay, so can you, of the ones that you finished, can you just... 
um, mention your thoughts on those? Harry Potter, well, almost everybody. Harry Potter, read that and it's one. a reread for you, right? Yeah, I've read that one like three times now. And then the changeling, which was you were like, I'm not sure I'm gonna like this. I really, and I'm like, just stick it out, just stick it out. I finished it and I liked it. I don't think I'd read it again, but it was. It but was you a good don't read. like to reread. Not really, unless they're really, really good, like Harry Potter and most of my classics that I have. I will reread. So, and then story of my. Are those the only two you finished? No, story of my life. I finished today. Um, <laughs> That one's just about the story of Helen Keller. Pretty simple. I like that one. That's the second time reading that one. It's a reread. And then... Listening for Lions. Listening for Lions, I did not get to finish. Um, but I will hopefully finish it in July. Okay. So, yeah, that's all, all the ones that I've read. So, um, after that, let me talk about the four I have here. Did not get to the fifth one, which I didn't think I would. If I was going to do how to talk to your kids about certain matters, um, I, how to talk to your kids about sex, if I was to do that, I had to start it at the beginning and just read short portions just because I knew that was going to be a book. I would need time to uh, reflect, ponder, chew, digest, and I did not get to it. So I'm actually going to start that in July and just do certain increments every day, every week. I'm not really sure. Hey, okay, so I have four more books to talk about plus a Audible. First of all, I want to talk about um, the audiobook and let, let me get that out of the way and then kind of go into these ones. The audiobook I read was actually Susie the Wife of Spurgeon, and it was a new release. It was came out in 2018, and it's one that I had really wanted to um, read. And then Audible Credit came, and that's how I actually use Audible Credit. Um, Audible costs about, about, like I'm Canadian. Uh, Audible costs approximately $15 a month. Um, that book was like $18 for hardback, so it's cheaper to get the Audible. But, um, I preferred that because now my husband can actually listen to it uh, while he's at work doing certain things. So that was actually a better investment for us. Audible has a deal going on. If it's still going down or still going on, I will leave the information down below. Now let's talk about Susie. Susie Spurgeon is so hard for me to do adequate reviews, especially on Goodreads for Audible books because I'm listening to them and I can't take my notes and I can't... <clears throat> do things usually I'm listening to those while I'm house cleaning or cooking and my hands are just not in a position to pick up a pen and write or I'm driving and in this case I was listening to that a lot with uh, doctor visits we were having back and forth from the big city that was a phenomenal book it in the essence that it gave a really good review of uh, Sus Susanna Spurgeon as a woman, as a wife, as a woman of God, and as a ministry leader. Like, she knew how to blend all of her little, I don't really want to put it that way, but she knew how to blend so many aspects of her life well that it was very interesting to me to see how she um, ba balanced everything out. Like, sometimes I really have a, a struggle between separating the um, homeschooling mom from the wife from a child of God because the child of God in me wants to just delve into scripture and and ignore everything around me so that I can learn more and study more but at the same time like the family needs to be taken care of so it was really good um, just to see how that works the author did a phenomenal job of not um, making an idol out of her like not presenting her too highly I really appreciate when a um, biographer uh, really cites the sources of where he's gotten his information also I really appreciate it when we say when he, when the author says we can't know this for certain but because this makes sense and this makes sense this is a conclusion that this author has come to 
and I really appreciate when it does that. There was a Luther, or a, a Catherine Luther biography book that I read a couple years ago that I actually did not like because there was too many assumptions and assertions made that were not backed up. Um, it was kind of, well, because this was stated in this source, therefore we can say that it happened across the board and I really did not think that was the case and I did not like um, how that how that was presented. Um, however, in this case, we had more of a, we're taking this that we have, we're taking this that she has said, and we're taking this that a biographer has said, and we are coming to this conclusion. So I really liked that. Again, I am not um, of the Calvinist faith, but that wasn't like, while it was a huge part of them, like the, the essence of the book wasn't to um, convert people to Calvinism through a biography, and I have read uh, things like that before. Um, it doesn't explain, it, this is this is what I found really interesting. So some biographies I have read that really just actually deviate from who you're learning about and basically try to present their point of view with Calvinistic beliefs. And I don't like those because I'm like, I'm here to learn about this person and I don't really, good idea, good, idea. good, good, good job, Ben. Um, and I don't really like that, however, in this case, I almost feel like it went the complete opposite. And so some things I was like, okay, I think this is how they believe. So let me go check that out. And so I was actually having to do a little bit more to fully understand something. So that was probably one thing I really didn't um, ap appreciate. It's not really the word. Like I should appreciate it. I just didn't, I just didn't think that it... I think it could have really enhanced the story if you had a little bit of it. And I hope that makes sense, especially if we are not of that belief and faith system. So, I know, how about me picking apart that? It's just those types of things that I really think about and um, think it would have enhanced the story a little more. Okay, so now I have these books to discuss and I want to start with a caveat. I think it is very interesting how um, June went in terms of worldviews, culture, and so much more. I think it's very interesting how the world went and my choice of books ended up being. And the choice of books was kind of random in so much as randomness could be. Um, so by the way, Susie Spurgeon was four stars. I don't know if I mentioned that. And I try to do good reads reviews for all of my books so that if you want a little bit more information, you can find that down below. Um, but in these books, um, we have The Outsiders, Wolf Hollow, The Ministry of Ordinary Places, and Falling Free. Um, I will start with Falling Free by Shannon Martin. I randomly picked this up at Ollie's. It says that she is rescued from that kind of life. Well, that is the kind of life that my husband and I are pursuing, like the ultimate American dream. And so it was um, really compelling. You know, it really drew me in as to, okay, why is she saying that she's being rescued from this? And so I picked it up. And yes, I'm not the kind of person to mark in books because I kind of like to leave them open for other people. And when I go back and reread something, um, it, it's hard for me to get really into the story if it's if my if my attention's being taken elsewhere by my markings, by my notes, whatever. I ended up marking this. I mean, I I don't even know if I can adequately show all of my markings and notes and whatever. Um, but there is a lot and I also have somewhere a notebook filled with quotes and notes and everything because like the gospel, the gospel comes with a house key. It has that same premise of we try to live a whitewashed Christian life, but then we're kind of missing the essence of the gospel, which is to, um, basically the what this you know who's our neighbor and the neighbor is told in the Samaritan the people that um, God has called us to bring in you know the poor the widow the helpless the people that 
I mean, in essence, we don't get to choose on me first. Like, you move into the house that you can afford in a place that maybe you desired. Um, for us, it was really a house we could afford with the things that we needed, and we can't chew with our neighbors. And so you might have very loud people next door, you might have the teeny boppers that uh, stay up all night drinking and then really don't like it when your kids are out playing. I mean, you don't get to choose your neighbors. Those are, those are the ones that we are called to love, we are called to um, show Christ through our lives and, and whatnot. And so this book kind of, um, really presents that aspect there were some there were some really deep things that uh hit me hard especially like i said this is the kind of life that my husband and i are pursuing we are pursuing this i would love to live on the homestead i mean my channel kind of says that all right there and so for someone to come in and say you know let's give you a different point of view this is what god has called us to do and her she left her um uh, her homestead, her six six acres and cute little farmhouse and uh, well-to-do jobs and now they, she is a wife, he's a prison chaplain. It, it was really good, however I did get to a part when I just, I literally stared at it and I was like, surely I am not reading this correctly. Here was one and I think there was another one later on. Okay, I'll just, I'll read this out loud. This is where I was like, okay, let me, let me preface this. She's a very Anne Voskamp in the way she presents things sometimes and I'm like, oh, okay, that is too fluffy. <laughs> like you are trying to fluff up what the gospel is and sometimes I would feel like her gospel was like seeker sensitive so it wasn't the complete picture but i got to the section and basically there are two people that moved into the neighborhood they're not necessarily i don't even know how to say it right not your cleaned up american people with uh, the sh long dresses and everything that's the only thing i could think of like everybody's different so i don't know how to to make the antithesis of this, but one morning before dawn, I woke one morning before dawn to a scratching noise outside our bedroom window. There stood Mike hunched over his shovel in shoes that weren't waterproof, clearing our drive from snow we hadn't even known had fallen. No gloves, a thin jacket, pushing snow around under a moonlight. I crawled back into bed sobbing, overwhelmed by the ways he and Lori had made our good life even better. Okay. Jesus tells us that inviting the marginalized, Jesus tells us that inviting the marginalized is important, among other things, because they cannot repay us. And we have a, a reference. So, quoting Jesus. I see his point, but this is one area where we'll have to agree to disagree. Like, I, I'm still feeling drained just thinking about that. Um, like, blood drawn, draining from your face. Like, even to say it almost sounds heretical. What she said after that, there's nothing wrong with that. I see his point. I see Christ's point. But this is one area where we'll have to agree to disagree. You don't get to agree or disagree with God. Throughout scripture... Isn't that what he was talking about? Like, it is better to give than to receive. Like, he has presented this. This isn't a new idea, Shannon. You don't get to disagree with God. You don't get to say, sorry, God, we'll agree to disagree. You don't get to do that. He is God. He is holy. You are not. Okay, we had an interruption, so maybe I can get back to where we were, which, judging by the plate way my book was put down, was that very large issue I had with the book. So that was an issue on page 144. And then, again, a lot of, after that I would say, I had new eyes going into the story. I kind of just started seeing some things that I don't really want to say like rubbed me the wrong way. I just felt like 
it it danced a line that I, I was uncomfortable with. It had to do with the least of these, and I don't know if I can if I can find the place. I thought I had marked it, but she was talking about how God calls them the least of these. And she's like, I don't like that term. And it's like, well, you, you don't get to, um, you don't get to say that you don't like how God says something like that's, that's not how life works. Sorry. It's, it is what I found it. Okay. It's tricky to talk about moving to an un under-resourced neighborhood. Inevitably, some well-meaning person will refer to my friends and neighbors as the least of these. Again, you're quoting Matthew here. Confession. I have always secretly struggled with referring to anyone as the least of these. I'm sorry, Jesus. It bugs me. No matter who says it or how relevant that person is, it sounds kind of uppity. I don't care for the us-them ring to it. It feels a bit of... It feels a bit... Cata system ish God's people are a buzz right now about extending generosity to the least of these. Update, I still don't even like to type it. It's definitely progress. The problem is, if I'm referring to someone as the least, what does that make me? The much better, the slightly holier, the fancier, the cleaner, the luckier, what? Of course, Jesus did refer to some of his people as the least. But I still can't shake the feeling I am the official least, even if no one else can see it. Okay, like... Jesus used it. There are least. You can't... We are all one in Christ Jesus, but there were the least. There are the weak. There are the simple. There are the wise, there are the reverse, the, the fools. There are those. There are the least of these. And the least of these actually has a root word that pretty much means um, exactly what it is. The lower of everyone. And it has nothing to do with anything other than what we make it to be. So you can, sorry Jesus, all you want. The fact is... If that was by itself, I could see it in a different light, but I can't because of the sor sorry Jesus, but like, you don't get to do that. So because of that falling free, um, I, I still took a lot from it. I still gave it a high review because again, in the time of where I am and when I started this, like it was interesting to me how this all started when everything else went crazy. It was very prevalent and it was really on point and she made some good arguments. The, and, and the thing is, is that this isn't the only book that does it. Um, and even if you want to argue that the Bible doesn't, actually the Bible does. Like, where do you think we get the idea of the least of these? Where do you think we get the idea that we need to help the poor, help the lonely, help the sick, help the orphans help the widows help the elderly like we're not doing that that is something that the christians are called to do that is not um <clears throat> anything outside of scripture so taking all that if you just read scripture sometimes what i need is someone to present it in a different light like you can read the scripture so much but when you put it in the circumstances that you haven't been exposed to suddenly that makes more sense. Kind of like how in reading Corinthians, um, when a, uh, a commentary mentioned that we had a lost letter, suddenly verses made sense. It's like, oh, when you have that bit of information, these make sense. So um, there you go. That's, that's what I have to say about that. And after that, after reading that, and after really struggling with that, um, interestingly, we actually had another one by Shannon Martin and I started this and I just realized, I feel like I'm reading the same old story told 
in a different way. This is not marked up at all. I already knew that it it was the same it was the same story it was the same book and i think that one was worded better and i just saw a lot more flaws in this i'm going to say something that i think might be offensive and it's not my intention but once i realized that she is a methodist and suddenly you're like oh now i understand your worldview now i understand your beliefs and other things kind of made sense because of that that helps me once you kind of see a worldview then you see how different anyway whatever i was going to say it's all gone now so after that this honestly this book i probably could have done without there wasn't a whole lot extra in this book that i didn't get in the first book this one is the ministry of ordinary places again it still had the same message and unfortunately i think it kind of was dumbed down because of a lot of what's going on in the world it had more of a um uh, we're privileged we're all this and we need to stop and think about the other people we need to help them but don't help them because you know that's just making them feel their their station um don't look at the way christians are trying to evangelize by the bounce houses and um uh, gospel music in the park but go evangelize in the in the park with your hot dogs and your bounce houses like it was wait a minute am i supposed to do this or not or does it only work in certain like that was legit a thing like she she kind of talked about how this one church would set up in the poor part of town at its park and have a bounce house and hot dogs and gospel music and she's like why do we do that to the poor sections of town why don't we go and evangelize to the rich which was a good point and then in the next chapter or two said that we need to be setting up bounce houses and hot dogs and creating relationships and conversations with these people so it's like well which is it which is what are we supposed to do are we not supposed to do this or are we supposed to do this uh so that was kind of a, a frustrating point and um it just it, it got to the point where it, i i kind of just skimmed the rest of it um there was a uh, one point in the book that i kind of copied it and sent it to um women in my life that are from different different walks different um churches so we just have like this little group of women um some are let's see we have what do we have calvary chapel um non-denominational oh uh baptist uh and we have a pentecostal in our book and i basically just took this one section and I know that you have to be careful with that because you can take something out of context but um, um, I was like well what do you think about this and I gave us a, a, a new scenario with that okay if this is a scenario how does this line up and then what how does this line up with scripture well, which is a bird in the birdhouse wow well, there's a bird in the birdhouse and um, they were like, well, that doesn't seem very scriptural. I was like, okay, that's my point right there. So uh, it just got to the point where I'm like, this is not scriptural or it's half truth. I think that is actually the biggest thing I have about this book. It's full of half truths. It's not complete truths. So you have something that you're like, this is true, but, but we didn't continue with the but. So I'll take this idea. God loves everybody yes but he loves us so much to leave us in the condition that we are and he died for us so that we would change from our sin and actually he changes us like we can't change ourselves anyway that's a whole nother thing i'm not even going to try to get into like so i actually didn't like it i i don't know i still have some stuff highlighted that i can take away from it but my point is, I think I would say, here is the Gospel Comes to the House key over those two books, even though I did get something from them. Just, 
I have a lot of pent up frustration about those books, as you can see. So again, all the stuff that's going on in the world and dealing with all of that and some of the, and she does have a lot of stories of what they have dealt with and literally, I'm not kidding, every single story she shares, she shares her guilt with being white and having money. I'm not kidding in that. So she has guilt every time she has to deal with somebody that isn't at the same status. And it's, I don't think that helps anybody. Like that does nothing. Feeling guilty for something doesn't change anything. Now she is changing things in the way that she can, but you can't just feed on guilt for the rest of your life. Um, so says a white privileged female. So again, like I said, there's a lot going on in the world. And I was like, okay, I need something lighter. Like I had gotten to the point where I have literally, literally, and I don't use that word a lot. Well, I've overused that word, so I need to change that word. But I have been crying a lot because there's just so much to deal with. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to take a light read. And I got chapter into this book. And I just kind of went, I can't get away from this. Wolf Hollow by Lauren Wolk is the story of someone that's being bullied. It's like, I give up. There's no escape. Books are just meant to be an escape or to educate you. And I have been so educated, I want an escape, and this was not the escape. But this is the one that I chose for the month. So I had to read it, right? You didn't have to, but I chose to. This one, the Newbery Honor, and it was a five star read. And let me explain why it was a five star read. You have your, it's told from the first person, which you know how I, well, you may not know, but I have a really hard time with first person present narration narrative stories so this is the story of Annabelle she is being bullied by someone new in the community and she has two twin younger brothers now the the bully basically says if you tell I'm going to hurt them and then the bully um just she has it out for Annabelle and she ends up hurting and basically breaking that promise. So Annabelle, you know, kind of caught in between what happened with her parents and trying to figure out how to keep this um, agreement with the bully um, basically tells what happened. And the dad was like, well, we can't help if you don't tell us. Like if a bully is going to use that over you, then there is no stopping how far they will go and they actually get to experience that. Why I like this book is that your bully is someone that you dislike and you keep wanting them to make a different choice. You keep wanting them to make a different decision. And you almost see that struggle and then you see this hardening. And you see that struggle and then you see a hardening. And it is not just like your typical Nellie Olsen, you just dislike her and there's nothing that um, can redeem this character. And in this book you keep wanting that character to redeem themselves like to make it right you keep wanting this to happen moving it's it's a heartbreaking book it is very good it is i believe classified as middle grade but um we're homeschooled so i don't we're not exposed to a lot of what um public school kids are exposed to so the bullying issue <clears throat> wouldn't be so much an issue for us um, not that um, you can't get that I happen to know that bullying can happen in a homeschool group just as much as in a public school group that is a fact <sighs> so um, I can't really it, it's there 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 is a uh, incident that happens in here that basically kind of the whole town gets involved something traumatic happens and it's it's moving it's horrific and because of that I would have a really hard time giving this to somebody under 14 I think my sister could handle it she will be 16 in a few months yeah a few months Ooh, 
my daughter will be 13 and she's very mature and she's this would be very hard for her to read like there the sense of justice the sense of um all of these things are still strong within her and not everything has a how it should have turned out ending and this is one of those books it made it it's made a beautiful statement it did a really well job or it did a very good job in in the the plot in the message it did it very well but I would be hesitant to to just outright give this especially without some kind of forewarning like if I, I really do think that if my daughter just found this on the library shelf and thought it looked interesting based on the back and picked it up and read it and finished it like she would need to figure out a way to process this and I think we have kind of um, forgotten that about our um, children that they they still have that that beautiful sense within them and it's not dulled by adult life and the reality that things don't always turn out the way that they're supposed to and they but the children still have that and that is something that is precious and that is something that is beautiful about childhood and that no I don't want to raise these completely innocent children that do not know how to survive the real world but I also it, it's kind of like how we grew up knowing how to do a um, tomato seed or a tomato plant you don't just take a tomato plant and then throw it into the elements you have to like adapt it and that's kind of where I think this book goes so like I said at this point my reading month has kind of fit the month of the world and it's been crazy and it's really difficult and I'm like okay what's next on that one that I chose and that was The Outsiders by S.E. -E Hilton which is a classic um this was written over 50 years ago I believe and it was actually written about a uh, written by a 15 year old high school student who had a conversation with somebody was outraged came home and wrote this book and finished it I think within a year or two and wow like that needs a standing applause because this also written in the first person um was very moving this is actually a gang type of novel and so far i have not had any success with those kind of novels okay first of all the author knew how to write language with, with the gangsters and all that she did not use one cuss word that I can remember in this book. But you get the idea that cussing was a huge part of this crowd, this group, but I do not remember reading one cuss word. Y'all need to take notes on that. You can make your point without having to use the actual word. Trust me. So. All that to say, this is about a young boy named Pony Boy who basically the story opens up with him. Um, they they are called greasers because of their hair. It's a little bit longer, but they're like the poor side of the town. And then they have the rich um, socks. So the socks are like the upscale um, gang, and then the greasers are the poor blue collar kids. And that's what this whole book is and it was done beautifully you had a and that's actually really hard to say like this is terrible like what they have to live through is terrible but it was well written and it was written there is a interview at the end it was written by someone that was talking with these these games and how they lived and wow <laughs> Um, I picked this up because somebody told me that she, and she is a Christian homeschooling mom. She is somebody I highly uh, look up to. She said this is a required reading for her, her kids. And so I wanted to know why. And it's beautiful. There is at one point a scene where a sock is talking to a greaser and he's saying, you know, the, the, 
one of his friends, he just wanted his parents to say no. He did all of these things and he was just trying to get his parents to say no. He wanted that boundary and he was never given that boundary. His parents always took it as, we have failed you, when he's like, all he wanted was his parents to tell him no, to set that parent-child boundary. And I might have pumped my fist into the air and said, yes, really loud and scared my kids. I might have done that. But more parents need to read that. Okay, it's okay to tell your kids no. Um, it was, I, I don't know. Um, again, this doesn't have language. So if that's something that bothers you, um, you're not going to find language in here. You get the idea of sex in here without getting sex. So what, what would stop you from reading this book? Especially, um, I know a lot of people are asking the kind of books that they should be reading today. Um, in light of our current situations going on all over the world, and I could have a whole video on all the things that you should be reading with that. But um, if you're wanting something to pick up today, like clean, The Outsiders, S.E. Hilton, or Hinton. I do not remember any language. That doesn't mean that they're not there. I do not remember it, which means it wasn't in my face, basically. Okay. So that is the very long wrap up of the books I read this month. No, it is not a huge stack like I sometimes have, but they were heavy books and they were deep books and they made me think and it was really, it was an exhausting month for reading because they were, we had some really good reads, some really good provoking thoughts for this day and time and Stuff that made me keep turning to scripture to make sure that what was being said was lining up with scripture. Kind of like how the rest of the world needs to work, right? Okay, well, that's going to be it for this month's wrap up of what I read and your reviews. And I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope you liked the little bit of a spin off that we did this month in how we chose the books to read. Um, so um, don't forget to check out that channel, it'll be linked down below. And until next time, have another cup of coffee and read another chapter.